بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We are in chapter number 38 of Kitab al-Tawheed and chapter 38 and 39 they are both related So we'll start reading 38, and the main theme of these two chapters is the Tawheed of Hukm. The Tawheed of Hukm. And that is that judgment and law making is only for Allah. Just like worship is only for Allah, just like Allah is the only one who can solve your problems, just like Allah is the only creator. Just like Allah is the only provider, also Allah is the only one who makes the laws in this universe. Allah is the only one who makes the laws. And whoever contradicts that, <coughs> and he gives that, <coughs> that right of Allah to someone else, then he or she has committed shirk. They have taken the right of Allah, one of his attributes, and they gave it to someone else, whoever that person may be. One individual, many, like that. Ibn Abbas, it says, chapter number 38, whoever obeys the scholars and the rulers in forbidding what Allah has made permissible and permitting what Allah has made forbidden, then he has certainly taken them as lords besides Allah. Whoever obeys the leaders and the scholars in making halal what Allah has made haram and making haram what Allah has made halal then you have taken those leaders and scholars as lords besides Allah why because it is only Allah's attribute and action he is the only one who declares what is halal what is haram so when you give that to someone else and you obey them in that you have given them a quality of Allah. You have given them a quality of which is only for Allah. So you have made them partners to Allah. You have made them partners to Allah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum I said, Yushaku an tanzila alaykum hijaratum min as sama. Aqulu ma qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa taquluna qala Abu Bakr and Umar. He says, Ibn Abbas, it may be that, it may be that stones are soon to descend upon you from the heavens. I fear that soon it will rain down stones on you. Why? I say to you, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said so, and you say to me, Abu Bakr and Umar said this and that. And this is authentically reported from Ibn Abbas. And the context of it is that when they were in Hajj, this is after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, they came and asked him about Hajj Tamattu', the Hajj which is of Tamattu'. There's three types of Hajj. Who knows them? Who knows the three types of Hajj, Naam Sheikh? Tamattu', Quran, and and ifrad and ifrad tamattu is when we do what you do umrah and you and you take your ihram off huh? and then during the days of hajj you go back into your state of ihram and then you slaughter and that is for those who bring an animal for them for us, literally, you don't bring an animal with you, but you buy the animal before you go there. So it's yours. That is tamattu. And that is the one the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he preferred for the people. He preferred for the people. What is Quran? What is Hajj Quran? Quran. 
حج في قران meaning you join you go for umrah and you don't come out of the state of ihram until after hajj you continue with your hajj and in mufarid or infirad ifrad you just go for hajj not umrah so they came asking him about hajj tamattu and abu bak uh, abu bakar and umar if i'm not wrong they told the people only do ifrad just come and do your hajj and go so they came to ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma and they asked and he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even though he did not come with the intention of ifrad he said i wish we do this so that is what he preferred that is what he preferred the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they said to him but abu bakr and umar say this and that you understand now so he said to them uh, i fear that stones may come down on you i tell you this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did you tell me abu bakr and umar you understand now the context of it there is the context of it ibn abbas radiyallahu anhum why did abu bakr and umar say only do uh, uh, ifrad because they said people if they just come if they come and they do both hajj and umrah they will desert the holy lands and just for hajj they'll just come for hajj but if we say you only come for hajj then all year round they'll be coming for umrah also you understand that is why that is their reasoning they said if we say to them they can do tamattu then nobody will be coming back to makkah or to the holy lands because they'll just come you do umrah and hajj and then you go they said no you do your hajj you don't do tamattu you don't do tamattu but ibn abbas is teaching us that even abu bakr and umar radiyallahu anhu the two greatest men after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they do not come close to the position of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that if you find a statement of abu bakr or umar and apparently it is not like the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then you follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because you are obligated to follow him unconditionally unconditionally ahmad ibn hanbal rahimahullah he said ajibtu min qawmin يعرفون اسناد he said i am astonished imam ahmad bin hanbal the great imam of ahl sunnah he says i am astonished by some people يعرفون الاسناد they know the chain of narration they know this hadith it goes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and its authenticity they know this is from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yet nevertheless ياخذون براي سفيان they go to the opinion of Imam Sufyan al-Thawri. Sufyan al-Thawri is one of the great Imams. He says, "Amazing, some people, they know this is the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but they leave it and they go to the words of Sufyan al-Thawri." Maybe you have not heard of Sufyan al-Thawri, some of you, but he's one of the great Imams of Islam. Just like today, you know, this is the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but he say no. my madhab he doesn't say that same thing same thing completely same thing while allah the most high he says falyahdhar alladhina yukhalifuna an amrihi an tusibahum fitnatun aw yusibahum adhabun alim let those who oppose his meaning the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam's commandment beware lest some fitna disbelief trials will befall them or a painful punishment a painful torment torment be inflicted on them allah he warned this is in the end of surah nur allah he warned those who oppose the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam those who do not follow his orders and his commandments and you know this is from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah has warned you of two things A fitna will come to your heart 
or a painful punishment. Imam Ahmad says that the runa mal fitna, you know what the fitna is here? When Allah warns those who go against the Prophet, وسلم, they'll be tested by a fitna. He said, What do you know what the fitna is? Al fitna to shirk. The fitna here is shirk. And Yarud the because he may reject some words of the Prophet وسلم, and this will cause him to have doubt and deviation in his heart and thereby he'll be destroyed. And thereby he'll be destroyed. It is called the religion of Islam, submission. You submit to Allah and Allah's commands and orders through the Quran and through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whoever does not do that and he knows, then it is fear, a fitna on him. And many of those people who have witnessed them in actual reality, they can leave the Prophet Sallallahu words for the statement of Imam so-and-so, Sheikh so-and-so, this madhab, that madhab, you see them, how they've been led astray waliyadhan billah they've gone astray if you can reject one hadith you'll reject all of them because what is the difference if you can reject one you'll reject all of them you'll reject all of them it is narrated from adi ibn hatim radiallahu anhu annahu sami'an nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqra'u hadhi al-aya adi ibn hatim he heard, he says, I heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa reciting this verse. We went through this verse before. The verse is Surah At-Tawbah. اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أرباب من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إلها واحدة لا إله إلا هو سبحانه عما يشركون عدي بن حاتم he heard the Prophet ﷺ reciting this verse. The verse it says in Surah At-Tawbah. Surah At-Tawbah, verse number 31. They, the Jews, have taken their rabbis and the Christians have taken their priests to be their lords besides Allah. And they also took the Messiah, the Messiah, son of Maryam. While they were commanded only to worship none but Allah. La ilaha illa huwa. There's no true God who deserves to be worshipped except Him. Subhanahu. He is far removed. He is praised and glorified. Amma yushrikun. Of what they set up as partners for Him. That is what the verse says. They have taken their rabbis and their priests as gods besides Allah. And they have taken the... Masih, the son of Maryam, as a God besides Allah. While they are commanded not except to worship one God, there is no true God except Him, glorified, exalted, subhanahu, from what they commit of shirk. In one narration, if I'm not wrong, Adi, he was still a Christian, from what I remember. So he said, no, we do not take them as, as gods. We do not take our priests and our rabbis as gods. The verse says they have taken their priests and their rabbis as gods besides Allah. And they have taken the son of Maryam, the Messiah, as God besides Allah. So he said, no, we don't take them as gods. When I tell you right now, you have taken this thing as a god, what do you understand? Worshipping, right? That is what you... You understand, God worshipping. And that is why we are learning this book to see that shirk is not just in worship. You understand, shirk is in some beliefs, they are shirk. Some statements, they are shirk. shirk. Some action as shirk. And tawheed is not just belief in the heart. Tawheed is in the heart. The actions of yours have to be upon tawheed and everything you say. So he said, no. Verily, we, did not, we do not worship them so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained to him saying afala yuharrimuna alaykum ma harrama allah ma halla allah 
ويحللون عليكم حرم الله don't they make haram what allah has made halal for you and don't they make halal what allah has prohibited haram for you and he said yes actually we follow them in that فقال, so the prophet وسلم, said فتلك عبادتهم so that is worshiping them you understand that is worshiping them they make for you halal what allah has made haram and they make for you haram what allah has made halal and you follow them you're actually worshiping them now because that is only for allah that is only for allah so whoever does that knowingly knowingly whoever declares something haram to be halal allah has said drinking alcohol is haram you come say no it is halal you know what allah has said you have no doubt then you have committed kufr even if you don't drink the alcohol even if you don't drink it but you declare halal what allah has made haram you have become kafir because you have made yourself a god and you are rejecting the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or making haram what allah has made halal declaring it haram for the people while you know with all certainty and clear knowledge this is not like that you have become a kafir that is kufr that is kufr even if you don't you don't do it yes even if you don't do it and whoever follows now these people in this if you follow the people who do this and you have clear knowledge we're not talking about the blind followers who just follows the rabbis the monks the sheikhs the muftis who have what not someone who has clear knowledge and he knows allah has made this haram and you make it halal then you have met them those people you follow as gods besides allah and you're actually worshiping them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in al hukmu illa lillah, judgment and law making is only for Allah. Only for Allah. Illa lillah, only for Allah. And the first judgment he made, Amara Allah ta'budu illa iya. He has commanded you that you shall worship none but him. Yo tuhid, practically has to be for Allah alone. When you're making dua, you're doing dhikr, you're giving your sadaqah, uh, you're reciting Quran, you're praying, it has to be only for Allah. And you get your laws of your do's and your don'ts only from Allah. Which brings us now to the next chapter. Chapter 39. Al-Hukmu bi ghayri ma anzal Allah. أو طلب الحكم من غير الله ورسوله هو نفاق أو من النفاق. Seeking judgment from other than Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is hypocrisy, نفاق. In fact, it's a form of kufr. Seeking judgment from other than Allah and then His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is a form of kufr. It's the same concept we just talked about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ زُعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Have you not seen those hypocrites who claim that they believe in what has been sent down to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that which was sent down to before you, the other books, have you not seen these people? They claim that. Yet, what do they do? Yuriduna an yatahakamu ila taqut. They wish to to go for their judgment in their disputes, their judgment, their law. They went. They wish to go to their law, to the taqut, the false gods, the false judges who judge with what not Allah has revealed. وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا And surely the shaitan wishes to lead them far astray. 
wa idha qila lahum an wa tisay to them ta'alaw kam ila ma anzal Allah to what Allah has revealed of his judgment wa ila rasuli and to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam when it is said to them come judge by the Quran and the sunnah ra'ayt al munafiqin you will see the hypocrites yasudduna anka sududa running away from you Allah says fa kayfa so how will they be idha asabathum musiba when a calamity strikes them bima qaddamat aydihim because of what they have done by themselves thumma ja'uka and then they now they come to you rushing yahlifuna billahi swearing by Allah in aradna we only wanted ihsanan wa tawfiqa illa ihsan wa tawfiqa we just wanted to do good and to bring the two and to do both of them what is meant here the hypocrites when they are called to be judged by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would say no they would rush to the judgment of the taghut especially the jews because they know those ones they take bribes they will not judge by what Allah has revealed Allah says have you seen them and they claim they believe in the Quran which was sent down to you and the books which were sent down before you until something happens to them now they come rushing to you swearing because the hypocrites they can swear falsely they don't care saying wallahi you only wanted listen ihsanan to do good wa tawfiqan and to have both parties so we want the judgment of Allah and also we want the judgment of the Jews we want the judgment of Allah and also want the judgment of democracy the judgment of Allah and also the judgment of socialism the judgment made up by man which contradicts the judgment of Allah those who want to join those two together mustahil impossible it's like moving a mountain and you are just like the hypocrites of before when they were called ta'ala come to what Allah has revealed and his best ya sallallahu alaihi wasallam they say no they want both these two they cannot mix this is from Allah this is from human beings and not just human beings evil human beings how can the two come together he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty also said وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ And when it is said to them, make not mischief on the earth, they say we are only peacemakers. That is how every mufsid sees himself. Those who are really evil, the real mischief makers, corruptors in this earth, they actually see themselves like they are doing good. In their own view, why? Because they are uqul and their hearts are turned upside down they're turned upside down and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted is said وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِسْلَاحِهَا وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and do not do mischief on the earth after it has been set in order Allah has set order these are the rules do not come and bring mischief and invoke him Allah with fear and with hope surely Allah's mercy is ever near to those who do good judging by other than the rule of Allah is a form of corruption on the earth because you human being I as a human being do we know better or Allah knows better Allah knows better Wallahu ya'alam wa antum la ta'alamun Allah knows you do not know so Allah has said these are the laws how can we now come and set up a place where we all meet once a month and we call it Parliament and we decide this is actually good this is not good this will be halal from today this is haram from today that is exactly what is being talked about here do you know or Allah knows so any laws which human beings make which contradict the laws of Allah they are part of Ta'ghut the false judgment which is being talked about any laws which contradict the laws of Allah
Allah the Almighty, He said, أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبْغُونَ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُقِنُونَ Do they then seek the judgment? Do they then seek the judgment of the Jahiliya days, people of ignorance, before Islam came? You still want that kind of judgment? وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا and who is better in judgment than Allah? لِقَوْمٍ يُقِنُونَ But it's only for people who have firm faith. The people with yaqeen, firm faith, they know. There can never be a better judgment than the judgment of the Lord who created everything. He is the one who created you. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ Can he not know the one who created you? He knows exactly what is good for you, what is bad for you. You understand? And Abdullah bin Amr bin Aas reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به None of you will truly believe. None of you is a true believer until his desires are in accordance with what I came with, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. None of you is a true believer until you can fight your desires to make them in accordance and to conform with what the Prophet ﷺ is taught. The human being's desires, they take him other ways. You can never be a believer until you push yourself and fight your desires to only agree with what Allah has brought down in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Otherwise, Either you're not a believer completely or you're a very weak, weak, weak believer. And a Sha'bi, he said, there was a dispute between a Jew and a Munafiq. There was a dispute between a Jew, someone who's Yahud, and a Munafiq, a hypocrite. And the Jewish man, he said, let us seek our judgment from Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For he knew that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, does not take bribes. But the hypocrite, he said, no, let us, take a, let us get a judgment from the Jews, from your people. Because he knew they accepted bribes. Thus both of them agreed to take their case to a soothsayer in Juhayna, a place called Juhayna. It was on this occasion that the verse was revealed, the first verse we read in this chapter. أَلَمْ تَرِ لَلَّذِينَ أَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ have you not seen those people who they claim they believe in what was revealed to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and what was revealed before you? Yuriduna yatahakam They want to seek their judgment to the false gods. So some said, this is why the verse was revealed. And some people said, Allahu a'lam if this was authentic or not. From what I know, it's not authentic, but it's a story they bring. They said that there was a dispute between two men. One of them said, let us take the dispute to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the other one said, let us take it to Ka'ab Ibn Al-Ashraf. And Ka'ab Ibn Al-Ashraf was one of the enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the main enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who used to oppose Islam. So one person said, let us go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The other one said, let us go to Ka'ab Ibn Al-Ashraf. Thereafter, both of them came to Umar, radiallahu anhu, and one of them told him the story. We had a dispute. I said, let us go to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, let us go to Ka'ab al-Ashraf. So Umar, he asked the other one who was not content to, the, to take the case to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi Is it true that's what you did? You did not want to go to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa And he said, yes. So Umar, radiallahu anhu, he struck him with a sword and he killed him. Allahu A'lam whether it is authentic or not. So this is the chapter of the ruling by Allah's rule. Judging by what Allah has revealed. Judging by what Allah has revealed and ruling by the rule of Allah, the Sharia of Allah, is a must on every human being. Not just on the Islamic country, no, you yourself. You have to judge your life by what Allah has revealed. You have to, co to conform your life 
and live your life by what Allah has given you of his rulings. This topic is not just for leaders, no. It is for everybody. How do you govern your life? How do you govern your life? And number two, of course, for the leaders, the Islamic countries, uh, they have to be ruled by the judgment of Allah. And when we don't rule by the judgment of Allah, Allah has promised there will always going to be punishments on us. If you don't judge by what Allah has revealed, Allah will always bring an enemy from outside, from the kuffar who will be coming against you. Judging by the Sharia of Allah is a must. Is a must. And whoever does not judge by the Sharia of Allah, willingly, willingly, and he says he believes, he believes that, in fact, you know, democracy and socialism and whatnot is better than the Sharia. This is kufr. This is kufr. He is just like the person we just talked about, who's making halal what Allah has made haram. This is kufrum billah. If he says and he believes, what? These other systems are better than the Sharia of Allah. He says we're in the 21st century, no? Now it is better we judge by these rules, not the Sharia of Allah. This is kufrum billah, major kufr. Because you have made people shuraka of Allah, you have committed shirk. Or he says, or he says, I think it's okay whether you choose the hukm of Allah, the judgment of Allah, or you choose the hukm of anybody else, any other system. They're all same. That is kufr of Allah also. That is kufr. Because you have made what is man, man made huh? to be equal to what Allah has brought. How can that be? That is kufr of Allah. You understand? That is kufr, major kufr. And like all the other acts of kufr we've discussed before, we know the difference of the action being kufr, but the actor, the doer of that action does not necessarily right away be what? A kafir. Because the rules of takfir have to be applied on him. The conditions have to be established and we have to make sure the obstacles are not there. That is the way of Ahlul Sunnah. We say this action is kufr. But not everybody who does that right away becomes kafir. Maybe he's jahil, he's ignorant, he needs to be taught. Maybe he's mukri, he's being forced, coerced, compelled. We need to see if he had a choice. Maybe he's mukhti, he just fell into a mistake, he did not intend it. You don't say he's a kafir. Maybe he has false understandings, misinterpretations. He has people he trusted as people of knowledge and they are misguiding him. He's not to be judged as kafir. The rules of takfir have to be applied. But the act itself is kufr. And whoever does it with all knowledge, this, these conditions are established, this person is out of Islam. He's out of Islam. If he chooses any other laws above the laws of Allah, there is kufr. Or he chooses and he says, these laws are just like Allah's laws. They're all same. There is kufr. But if he believes that Allah's laws are the best and they, the ones who, they're the ones who are supposed to be applied, yet he judges in a matter, one matter, or many, in other than the rule of Allah, then this person, he can be a kafir, he can be a fasiq, he can be a zalim. According to what he did, according to his intention, according to his knowledge. Even one judgment, we're not talking about the whole system. Even one judgment. He knows this is the rule of Allah. He knows for sure this is the rule of Allah. But he chooses other laws. That one judgment can make him kafir. It doesn't have to be the whole system. 
But someone who knows this is the rule of Allah, but he does it because of a worldly benefit, money, position. Just like someone who drinks alcohol, he knows it's haram, but he does it or he sells it just for what? Money, position. Just like someone who knows working in a bank is haram, you're dealing with riba day in, day out. But he only does it because he is weak, he wants that money. That person is not kafir. He is a major sinner. He is committing one of the major sins. But he is not committed kufr that he is out of Islam. The action might be kufr. The action is still kufr. But he is not kafir. You understand the difference? You actually understand me? I am talking to myself. Am I talking to myself? Okay. That is the simple details of this topic. Of ruling by other than what Allah has ruled. Judging by other than the laws of Allah. Whoever views them to be equal to Allah's laws, that is kufr. Whoever views them actually to be better than Allah's laws, that is kufr. Whoever views them that they are not better, the sharia of Allah is always better, but he is just weak. That person, uh, he is not to be called kafir. He is still a Muslim, but he is committing a major sin. He is committing a major sin. It is a must, I'm saying it again, Ikhwan, for the Muslim to judge his life by the laws of Allah. Your life has to be judged by the laws of Allah. لا يؤمن أحدكم None of you can truly believe until his desires are in accordance with what I came with, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. This is a must. And then, as a community, as a government, it has to be the rules of Allah which are applied. This is the part of Tawheed also. This is part of the Tawheed of Ar-Rububiyya or Uluhiyya. The Tawheed that only Allah is the judge. You understand? So if you give that to anyone else, you have committed shirk. And that is one of the problems of living in countries which are based on that. So today human beings come together and they say, okay, let's vote on alcohol. Alcohol, good or bad? 52 said good, 48 said bad. Okay, it's good from today. Let's vote on homosexuality. Good or bad? 51% say good, 49% say bad. Okay, it's good. It's allowed from today. Let us vote on pedophilia, molesting of children, as in some countries. Good or bad? Soon, you'll see it soon. People vote good, it will become good. Let us vote in someone having 10, 11, 12 girlfriends. Is that, okay? is that okay with our laws or not? It's fine as long as it doesn't harm anybody. Good, okay, halal. And all of those things like that. Uli Adam Billah. Nasalullah al salam. And this brings us to the last chapter of today, which is the last chapter of today, which is today, Friday, so it's not last chapter of today actually. Today is Friday. We'll discuss this on Saturday actually, on Sunday, on Sunday. Because we have 10 minutes, this is a special time to make dua now. So I'd rather have that time for dua. Actually, um, as an announcement, today, tomorrow in the morning, tomorrow in the morning, Fajr, the Fajr which is coming, we will be completing Tafsir of Surah Ali Imran, Alhamdulillah. Today we'll be completing that. And um, after that, we'll be doing Kitab Tawheed in the mornings also. So in the evening and in the morning, we'll be doing Kitab Tawheed. So hopefully we can complete the book in Ramadan. If you can't come Fajr, you can view live stream. You can view live stream, just search my name on YouTube. We have live stream every day on YouTube. All right? Khair. No questions. It's not time for questions. It's time for dua. If you have questions, you write them down. We answer them during Fajr or you come yourself at Fajr. 
um subhanak allahumma bihamdika shadan la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu you took some names but maybe there's more people because we sent out some of that yesterday it's up here 